Welcome to Have History Real Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I want to take you back in time to Pickett's Charge and give you a first-hand account of that attack that happened on July 3rd, 1863 in that little Pennsylvania town called Gettysburg. The account I'm going to read to you is of John Dooley. John Dooley was in the 1st Virginia Infantry. He was a captain in that regiment and was captured during Pickett's Charge. During his imprisonment is when he wrote this account of what it was like to march across that field and attack the stone wall on Cemetery Ridge. The sun poured down his fiercest beams and added to our discomfort. General Deering was in front with his flag waving defiance at the Yankees and now and then rushing forward to take the place of some unfortunate gunner stricken down at his post. The ammunition wagons fly back and forth bringing up fresh supplies of ammunition and still the air is shaken from earth to sky with every missile of death fired from the cannon's mouth. Around, above, beneath, and on all sides they screech, sing, scream, whistle, roar, whir, buzz, bang, and whiz. And we are obliged to lie quietly, though frightened out of our wits and unable to do anything in our own defense or any injury to our enemies. Our artillery has now ceased to roar, and the enemy have checked their fury, too. The time appointed for our charge has come. I tell you there is no romance in making one of these charges. You might think so from reading Charlie O'Malley, that prodigy of valor, or in reading of any other gallant knight who would as little think of riding over gunners and such like as they would eating a dozen oysters. But when you rise to your feet as we did today, I tell you, the enthusiasm of ardent breasts in many cases ain't there. And instead of burning to avenge the insults of our country, families and altars and firesides, the thought is most frequently, oh, if I could just come out of this charge safely, how thankful would I be. We rise to our feet, but not all. There is a line of men still on the ground with their faces turned, men affected in four different ways. There are the gallant dead who will never charge again. The helpless wounded, many of whom desire to share the fortunes of this charge. The men who have charged on many battlefields, but who are now helpless from the heat of the sun. And the men in whom there is not sufficient courage to enable them to rise. But of these last, there are but few. Up, oh, brave men! Some are actually fainting from the heat and dread. They have fallen to the ground, overpowered by the suffocating heat and the terrors of that hour. Onward, steady, dress to the right, give way to the left. Steady, not too fast. Don't press upon the center. How gentle the slope. Steady, keep well in line. There is the line of guns we must take, right in front. But how far they appear nearly one-third of a mile off on Cemetery Ridge, and the line stretches round in almost a semicircle. Upon the center of this we must march. Behind the guns are strong lines of infantry. You may see them plainly, and now they see us perhaps more plainly. To the right of us and above the guns we are to capture. Black heavy monsters from their lofty mountain sites belch forth their flame and smoke and storms of shot and shell upon our advancing line. While directly in front, breathing flame in our very faces, the long range of guns which must be taken thunder on our quiver and melting ranks. Now truly does the work of death begin, the line becomes unsteady, because at every step a gap must be closed, and thus from left to right, much ground is often lost. Close up, close up the ranks when a friend falls, while his life blood bespatters your cheek or throws a film over your eyes. Dress to the left or right, while the bravest of the brave are sinking to rise no more, still onward, Captain Hallinan has fallen and I take his place. So many brave have fallen now, so many men have fallen now that I find myself within a few feet of my old Captain Norton. His men are pressing mine out of place. I ask him to give way a little, to the left. And scarcely has he done so than he leaps into the air, fallen prostrate. Still we press on, oh, how long it seems before we reach those blazing guns. 
Our men are falling faster now, for the deadly musket is at work. Volley after volley of crashing musket balls sweeping through the line and mow us down like wheat before the scythe. On men, on. Thirty more yards and the guns are ours, but who can stand such a storm of hissing lead and iron? What a relief if earth, which almost seems to hurl these implements of death in our faces, would open now and afford a secure retreat from threatening death. Every officer is in front, picket with his long curl streaming in fiery breath from the cannon's mouth, Garnet on the right, Kemper in the center, and Armistead on the left. Colonels, lieutenant colonels, majors, captains, all press on and cheer the shattered lines. Just here, from the right to the left, the remnants of our bravest pour in their long reserve fire. Until now, no shot had been fired. No shout of triumph had been raised. But as the cloud of smoke rises over the heads of the advancing divisions, the well-known southern battle cry which marks the victory gained or nearly gained bursts wildly over the bloodstained field and all that line of our guns is ours. Shot through both thighs, I fall about thirty yards from the guns. By my side lies Lieutenant K.O. Shot through the knee, here we lie. He is in excess of pain. I fearing to bleed to death, the dead and dying all around. While the division sweeps over the Yankee guns, oh, how I long to know the result. The end of this fearful charge. We seem to have victory in our hands. But what can our poor remnant of a shattered division do if they meet beyond the guns in obstinate resistance. There, listen, we hear a new shout, and cheer after cheer rends the air. Are those fresh troops advancing to our support? No, no, that huzzah never broke from southern lips. O oh God, Virginia's bravest, noblest sons have perished here today and perished all in vain. Oh, if there is anything capable of crushing and wringing the soldier's heart, it was this day's tragic act, and all in vain. But a little well-timed support in Gettysburg was ours. The Yankee army had been routed, and Pickett's division earned a name and fame not inferior to that of the old guard of Bonaparte. I hope this first-hand account gives you a new perspective on Pickett's charge in Gettysburg and the Civil War as a whole. Stay tuned for more videos like this. I hope to bring you more first-hand accounts of different battles. So have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.